Today, we talk about the 6500 XT. Yeah, it's like a better 5500 XT, but worse. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. So. A couple of days ago at CES 2022, the company unveiled a plethora of products. In the laptop department, we got pretty much exactly what has been leaked for the past six months. A lineup of Zen 3 Plus CPUs based on TSMC's six nanometer process, and of course, equipped with a pretty dope IGP. Seriously, at 12 RDNA 2 compute units, these chips pack some serious heat. Think about it this way. The 680M, which is in the 6800U, and all of the H and HX models have 12 CUs, and the clock speeds are way higher than other RDNA 2 integrated products like the Steam Deck and the Xbox Series S. At 22 to 2400 megahertz, if everything were to scale linearly, the 680M is about 10% slower than an Xbox Series S. And let's be real, the Series S is no slouch. It's the perfect integrated graphics for 1080p gaming. And then you add FSR and yeah, it's freaking amazing. Anyways, enough raving about the APU that I was looking for. For the event, these were the highlights in my opinion. The CPUs and GPUs, not so much. While we did see a Zen 4 CPU pop up with its wild heat spreader, all we got was confirmation of what we already knew. 5 nanometers, LGA socket, DDR5, and PCIe Gen 5. Also, excuse me, Dr. Sue, but this? What you're seeing is 1080p gameplay footage of Halo Infinite running on a pre-production 5 nanometer Ryzen processor. To give you an idea of why we're so excited about Zen 4, you can see beautiful gameplay at very high frame rates. Boasting about very high frame rates means nothing if you don't give us a number or at least put a frame counter up. This feels like something that Intel would do, not UAMD. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Anyways, then we got the GPUs, the 6500 XT and the 6400. Now I'll focus on the 6500 XT because it's the higher end model and also it's the only one that you'll be able to buy outright in a store. So this GPU is going against a GTX 1650 and the RTX 3050. It's kind of an in-betweener it seems. And that's great. And the uh, 199 suggested price and yeah, calm down, I know, shortage, scalping and everything. But still, if we lived in a perfect world, 199 sounds like a good deal. But then they killed any reasons for me to buy this GPU. Why? Well, let me start with this. I like budget builds. And what I like about budget builds is how versatile they can be. For example, I built a system with a Ryzen 3600 and a 1650 for my little cousin two years ago. What did he do with it? Well, he games, he plays with his friends, he streams, he records gameplay, and because recently he's wanted to go into filmmaking, he edits videos. You can do pretty much anything you want on that thanks to the NVENC encoder. And that also goes to the RX 5500 XT, which had AMD's Radeon multimedia engine. So what does AMD do with the new and improved 6500 XT? They ruin it. It comes with a nerfed media engine that doesn't support 4K H.264 encoding, any H.265 encoding, or AV1 decode. What does that mean? Well, streaming on Twitch and YouTube are limited to sub 4K resolution, which I know not everybody does, but some people want to stream in 4K. It also means that rendering at 4K is not accelerated and recording gameplay at 4K is not accelerated using the GPU engine. Also, streaming encoded anything in H.265 is also not present. So blocky YouTube streams, here we come. If you think there isn't a huge difference between the two, check out Clix Phillips' video about H.265 compression. It's like magic. And on top of that, AV1 decode is not available, which means no watching higher quality AV1 content on YouTube or in the future on Netflix or Twitch or on apps like VLC. So why am I so pissed about that? 
Well, all the APUs, which are slower, do support all of these features. And so do some older GPUs with the exception of AV1 decode. And that's not all. The 6500 XT is running on a PCIe Gen 4 x 4 link. Why does that matter? Well, on the last generation with the 5500 XT, we had the same configuration. And if you just wanted to get a GPU and you have a system with PCIe Gen 3 lanes, you can be severely handicapped in terms of gaming performance. I made a video about it back in December of 2019, and that's the chart that you're seeing right now. It was pretty bad. So yeah, you might not take advantage of any of the features that I mentioned today and never have to worry about these with these GPUs, but some people do use some of them and gimping any of those was a bad move in my opinion. For the $50 more and the NVENC encoder, the 3050 is definitely the way to go here. Nvidia did not skip on it at all. And it's the same seventh generation encoder as the uh, entire 3000 series. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it. A comment if you want to talk about uh, what a travesty this 6500 XT is. Um, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. I switched things up. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, there was a llama here.